Hey there everybody, what is going on? My name is Aditya and welcome to another video about Semantic UI. Now last time I created a video about Semantic UI's theming process which was specifically available on Udemy. I just created a little bit of <clears throat> uh, type of version on, on my channel. Uh, so, you know, I got a lot of dislikes on that video. So I asked whether uh, what is the problem so i came to know that the video was not descriptive enough so i thought how about going ahead and creating an entire series based upon the semantic ui's theming process so here i am right now because of that only so you can see here uh, on, i'm on the theming page and in this video i'm not going to be coding anything or not setting up anything in the next video we'll be setting up how uh, what kind of tools we require and the things but the purpose of this video right now is that I am going to be showing you what, uh, how exactly uh, the theming process is described in the semantic UI's theming. You know, they have just given a little bit of demo, they have given a site-wide defaults, which is not too descriptive, I may say. If you know a little bit of uh, LESS, uh, that is the less or... Uh, you know, it is not based upon the SAS, that's the main thing, uh, SASS, which is another semantically awesome style sheet, as people love to call it, but it is not called as that. But, uh, you know, it is based upon the less, so you can go ahead, get through this thing, which does not explain you almost anything. You can go ahead and try to apply the theme and uh, then see it. I guess the theme is set to the default ones but you know when you go to the semantic UI's main home page and you get downside to a little part over here which has select theme and there are a couple of themes so basically we can go ahead and create our own theme so this is the raised theme this is the github theme just see how much realistic it looks now the uh, the the purpose uh, of creating the themes is there's just one code base and we are just going to be theming on the top of that not like uh, you know we are going to be using the different libraries for the different uh, now let's just say we want the bootstrap type of effect we can go ahead and get that we want semantic ui which is the default one which is really good which we don't need to change almost all the times amazon one which looks perfectly awesome obviously uh, Twitter ones, which is also awesome, but not as much as I love the Amazon or Semantic UI's one. So basically, we are going to be taking a look at how we can go ahead and theme every single component inside of the Semantic UI. What we can go ahead and do with the help of that. You can see there are almost 3,000 plus theming variables. And they have set up, I guess, a... Uh, uh, there's even a site about the semantic UI's theming process, which again does not go into the pretty much great details. So we are going to be getting into pretty much deepest part. Since my channel is started on semantic UI, I'm going to be enjoying this series. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching this video. The next video will be up tomorrow. And maybe if you're watching this later, maybe it is out right now. So... You can go ahead and check that video out because this is going to be a ton of fun. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you loved this video, just go ahead and slap that like button and peace out.